Hi there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. Today's video is going to be my Shut My Stash for July. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. This video is my Shut My Stash for July. I do my Shut My Stashes in a slightly different way than most people because this also kind of functions as a project pan, products I'm currently using, and a look ahead of things that I will be using and videos that I have coming up. So first we're gonna go over what's in the drawer at the minute, what I was using in June, and giving you all the mini reviews. And then we're gonna go into the drawers and select some new products to try out for July. But before we get into the video, it may be good to know that I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone. And because of that, I have some different makeup preferences than most people in the beauty sphere. Um, I've also been a makeup reviewer for more than a decade. I love my eyeshadow palettes, I love Essence and Catrice, and I love getting the use out of, your, out of my makeup. So if you're here for that, and that's what you're interested in, then I hope you would like to consider subscribing by clicking the button down below and joining the Snow Angel family. So usually we're mainly talking about what's going on here. I was hoping to show you that I had used up like four or five products. Sadly, that didn't work out because nothing is has run out quite yet. So I'm very much trying to use up my eyeshadow primer. As you can see, it's nearly done. There are days where I struggle to get anything out. So any day now. Same thing with the lip balm. I'm still doing my best. The setting spray, I just used the hairband. Um, can you see? Like literally, if, it, if the month came like two days later, this would have been gone. But I will be selecting some new bits in this video because I know that those three products are going to be used up. Um, and this concealer as well, it's very much almost done. You can see how big the gap is. I struggle getting product out of it. Um, so that's another one that I need to replace. Both of my brow products are still going strong, so I don't need to go back to that. So I have the Essence Make Me Brow in here and also the uh, Face Shop eye Eyebrow Pencil. That eyebrow pencil is starting to feel a little bit dry and I'm nowhere near done with it. So I'm not sure how long this is gonna last because I don't think I'm even going to be able to use this up. Like, look how much product I have left. There's so much left, but the texture has definitely changed. So I'm not entirely sure whether that's gonna last. Mascaras are still going okay. And I still have a couple of backup mascaras that I've already opened, which I've decided to keep in here so that they don't migrate into my the rest of my makeup collection. So I'm just gonna choose one of these three that are in here. I keep scissors and pens in here as well because if I have any packages to return, I keep everything in this drawer. Don't ask me why, it's, it's easiest. Um, so then we get to this side of the drawer and there should be this, but this is again, a product that I've nearly used up. It's the Kiko Hydrating and Perfecting Face Primer. This I'm going through really quickly because it's a thicker, more silicone heavy uh, primer. It's not as hydrating as I'd like it to be. It's good for the summertime. It's a nice primer for sure, but I like mine to be a little bit more hydrating, you could say. So I've just been using quite a bit of this every time I need to use it because I just need a lot of product to cover my entire face. So again, I need to select a new primer because this is gonna be gone in the next week. So I was still in the midst of my K-Beauty trial period. I still have a few bits I need to try in July, but I'm also going to be going back to an old favorite. I have reviews up for these up on the blog if you're interested, but I will be doing a complete roundup of all of the K-Beauty BB creams and foundations I've tried in recent months and do like a top 10 ranking with them um, in this month because I will be doing a full week dedicated to nothing but K-Beauty where every video I do that week is going to be K-Beauty related. And one of the videos I plan on doing that week is that K-Beauty BB cream review. So I'm not gonna say too much about these. These were good. Um, but they have their pros and cons, but you'll have to stay tuned for more information on these. So I already showed you the only concealer I was using because I was trying to use it up. Powder-wise, you guys, this Kiko powder, now that I've hit pan on it, it's starting to get a really nice dip. There was so much product still up here, I thought, but when I feel this, I can really start it, it's really starting to flatten from the middle out. So I'm probably going to be left with a lot of product in the corners once this is done. Um, and I'm, I'm not the kind of person who scrapes face powders out of the pan and represses things. 
mainly because I have experienced in the past that it very often messes with the textures, especially of face powders, um, if you repress them. So I'm not sure how this is gonna go. I'm gonna keep it in for another month. My aim is to use up as much of this as I can, and hopefully I can count it towards my use up pile later this month, or later this year, I should say, not this month. I had two bronzers in here. Ooh, there's a camera, hi. Um, so I have my Fenty Beauty in here, which I've decided I'm gonna keep in for another month. I think this may be the bronzer I wanna try and hit pan on. I try to hit pan on a bronzer every year, but I think this is a good contender. Like there's a good size dent on this side of the pan. Um, so I think I just need to soldier on with it and see how it goes. And then because I still hadn't tried it out, the Charlotte Tilbury Cream Bronzer, this is good. It's definitely the best Charlotte Tilbury bronzer I've tried. I just didn't need this much product. I will never be able to use it up before it expires because I only need a little bit. I just dip my brush in like doot, just that. I don't swirl it in, I just tap it in and that's enough And to, for me to cover all the different sections in my face. If I use more, it starts to look very muddy very quickly. So with this one, a little goes a long way. Beautiful product for sure. I'll go back to it, I think, September time because I feel it's just a hair too deep for me where I'm at with my skin tone at the minute. So I think post-summer, this is going to be a lot better. And then we have the highlighters, the Rare Beauty in Mesmerize. This is lovely. I adore it. I finally got around to reviewing it this month. Max Show Gold. This is one of their extra dimension uh, highlighters. I love this thing for the summertime. It doesn't look like it's going to work for me but it's so pretty. And the Sydney Grace one in Pumpkin Spice Latte Extra Whipped. This I got in my mystery bag last year during their Christmas in July sale, which is going on this month again. I'm very excited to see what they have in store for us. They usually announce it on their Instagram. Uh, I hope they do mystery bags again. And if they do, then I, th I might consider buying those, but we'll see because I'm currently at a point where I'm like, I don't really need that much makeup and I'm traveling in August, so I know I will be buying more makeup then. <sighs> choices, choices, I don't know yet. Yeah, this was lovely, but I do feel it's perhaps slightly too deep for me. Like it is pretty, don't get me wrong, it's a very pretty highlight, it's this peachy number, which I love, but it kind of lays on the skin just a little too much for my liking. Do you just see, it's got a bit of a cast I mean, the flash is beautiful. It looks stunning once it's on my face, but I'm not sure I need to keep that around in my collection long-term. For blush, um, I had some cream to powder, cream blushes and one powder blush. And I think I used all three of these quite equally, actually. The uh, Patrice Cheek Lover is one that I bought last year and I love it. It's Nars Orgasm from the drugstore, but then better. That's all I need to say about that one. Tahiti from e.l.f. A lot of people don't like these, but I have found with these e.l.f. putty blushes that it kind of develops a layer if you don't use it for a while and you need to sort of dig through the layer first. Then you get to the product and I need to apply a lot of this to really have it show up because it's quite a sheer formula, which I don't mind because it means it's very easy to control. Um, but I do have to go in twice with this to get the look I want. Um, but I love it. A lot of people say it fades on them. For me, it doesn't. So, And then MAC Glow Play in Heat Index. I love it. I'm wearing it today. And then before we get to the drawer, I always like to show you what I was using in terms of lips. Now, I know this isn't the only stuff I used in terms of lipsticks because I did film a K-Beauty lip stain review this month and I actually forgot to put the ones I had used this month back into the cubby. So there are a couple missing, plus I developed a cold sore in the final week of the month, so I wasn't able to wear lip products at all for a good week. Um, but yeah. Dior lip oil, of course, it's in here every month because I love it. Um, then the three K-Beauty bits that I hadn't tried yet. So I tried a, 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 a lip tint from 3CE, another one of the Amuse uh, Dew Tints. I think th this may be my favorite formula I've tried so far of the K-Beauty stuff. And the Romand one. This is the, the Dewy Full Water Tint um, from their... Um, I think it was their milkshake collection or something like that. 
This is very pretty as well, a really nice cool tone pinky shade, which you can't tell from the tube, but it's very pretty. And last but not least, where will we be without Lisa? Lisa Eldritch lipsticks, because those I tend to wear the most. She's come out with a new shade in the True Velvets, and she's restocked the ones that were out of stock. So yes, I did place myself an order, and you can expect an overview of all of the True Velvets later this month. I did all of the uh, Luxuriously Loosens and Insanely Saturateds in June, and in July we're gonna talk True Velvets, because... I'm so stoked to try out the shades I haven't tried yet, but I think this is again some of my favorites. Such a fun bright pop of color in New Wave that I've tried again. Love it. Um, I also used Strawberry Shock, which is from the same release as New Wave. Such a stunning bright, vibrant electric red. Love of My Life has a, become an unexpected favorite for me. This is not my kind of pink. But when it's on the lips, something just happens. And you guys know, with Lisa Eldridge, that's how I feel about most of her lipsticks. And then another fun, bright pop of color, Velvet Carnival. Welcome to the face drawer, but I did already select some products from another drawer because they just happen to be in there and it's a bit of a faff to film it. So I've got a new lip balm to try out. This is the Burt's Bees Lip Balm in Vanilla Bean. This was the lip balm I always used to use before I tried the C.O. Bigelow ones. And the C.O. Bigelow isn't available here, so I'll just go back to this. I know C.O. Bigelow is for sale at Liberty's in London, so I may be able to pick it up when I'm there in August. Um, and then the Tone Activator Eye Primer from Kaleidos. I got this as a free gift with purchase, purchase and I tried it once. And this actually has a skin tone like blocks out your lid base in there already. And maybe for the summertime, that may be good for me to then skip the paint pot that I always use. So I'm gonna try these two things. For setting spray, I already told you last time that I was gonna go and try the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. Bought it in the Black Friday sale, but I haven't used it yet. And for primer, I will be going in with the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip. Um, this is one of my favorite primers. Mine is starting to not turn just yet, but I know these can turn a really strange dark green color if you don't use them up in time. And I've owned this for quite a bit, so I actually think that I want to use this up before it expires. So this is going to go in for when the Kiko runs out. And then actually I have alternatives to the Milk Makeup as well, because this is another K-Beauty find. So they do these base products. I'm not sure how to categorize these. I actually bought them at the same time as a lot of the BB creams that I've been trying out, thinking they would be the same thing, but they're more like a primer. It's like skincare makeup primer hybrid with SPF. They're both SPF 50. Uh, the Heimish Artless Glow Base is a cult favorite, and there's also one from Apieu. This is the Sun Base, the Power Block Sun Base Tone Up, and they kind of perfect your skin but at the same time, they add a bit of glow and they're very hydrating and nourishing. So I do want to try these out this summer. So I'm just giving them a shout out here so you know that this is something I want to try out. But I haven't yet. Concealer. Dior Forever Skin Correct. I have said how this is a little bit too dark for me. But since we're heading into summer, I think now is the time of the year that I can actually get away with the shade. And I definitely want to write a dedicated review to this because I love this concealer. I love the texture. I love the formula. We get a heap of product. And I think I'm just going to have to make the most of it during the summer season. For the rest of my base, I'm going to be going in with the remainder of some K-Beauty Bits and the Chanel. So this is the Maison Collagen Power Foundation in shade 13. I'm wearing this today already for the first time because I else won't have enough time to try this out before I need to do the review and do the full roundup. So that's another one I still need to try. And I completely forget about this, the Clio Nudism CC Cream. Sounded like a really good product. I have already tried this once or twice, but I forgot to write the review. So still need to do that. And then I'm going to go back to the Chanel. I've told you that I'm going to try to use this up. This has been discontinued. It's an older product in my collection. And it doesn't have that much product. Ooh, I'm trying to shake it up and hear how much is still in there. Um, this is this is a product I've, I've had for years, so it's just time to use it up. Going back in with the Glossier Halo Scope for highlighter. This is in the shade Quartz. Mine looks atrocious, but I love this thing. Vanilla Quartz by Becca. That's going to be the powder highlight of the month. 
Um, I don't need any other bronzers. Maybe go in with the milk because it is a bit deeper. So I may want to put that in. I also know I want to use this, the Juicy Pang Blusher from Apu in the shade Cherry. This is a stunning product and I don't think I've reviewed this shade yet. So another thing that was still on the list and these liquid blushes are perfect for warm summer days. But I also love a glowy blush in the summertime, Incandescent Electra from Hourglass. I think it's a perfect one to wear right now. Another thing that's new with a cream and a powder, the Petrik Ta blush in She's Vibrant. This was, I believe, a part of a palette at first and then they were released as singles as well. This got the cream and the powder. I think I'll just go in with the cream first and see how I feel about that. So it looks a little bit messy perhaps, but that's because um, as I'm using things, I'll get to it for sure and it makes a bit more sense. And of course, once some of these products are gone, it doesn't look that messy anymore. Um, so I'm very excited to try out these products and to see how they go. Um, this I, for instance, already know I'm gonna love this Juicy Pink Blusher. I just haven't used that shade much. Let me talk you through eyeshadow palettes I wanna go back to and eyeshadow palettes that I'm gonna be reviewing for you. So for the eyeshadow palettes I'm gonna go back to, it's going to be the reorganized Natasha Denona palettes that I haven't gone back to yet and one of the ABH palettes that I reorganized. So I have two of these with shades from like Modern Renaissance, Norvina, the Jackie Ina, the Sultry, um, and a couple, uh, I think the Prism, I think I put in there as well. And I think this is really nice for right now, but the other one I have, I feel screams fall to me. So I think I'm gonna keep that one around for the fall time and just try this one out for this time around. And then the Natasha Denona Glam. I just made like a neutrally color story with some purples in here and some pinks. So we'll try that. The Retro is just a full on berry palette now with some warm tones, which I think for the summertime are actually some of my favorite shades to wear. And then the My Dream, I put all of the other warm tones into it. So if there's gonna be a se uh, like a season where I wear warm tones, it's gonna be right now. So these I can't wait to try and go back to. And then I have six eyeshadow palettes from K-Beauty Brands. So I have another one of the Holika Holika ones. This is their button up palette from the It's um, it My Fave Mood uh, collection. And I think I'm gonna actually like this better than the Neat Knit one. I think this leans perhaps a little bit more mauve-y more like cool tone brown. I have another Clio palette to try. I wanted to try some more by them. I really enjoy the Clio formula. I already tried two of these in the past and it's the reason why I wanted to try out other brands. So the Over the Path was a limited edition, I believe. Look at this, look at this. Like, can you, uh, and it actually has like some decent shimmers in here as well that aren't too glittery. So four shimmers, six mattes, some lovely warm mauve tones. I can't wait to try this. Then this was a brand that was recommended I try. This is the Bibia, I think, the Tea House palette. Uh, final shadow palette in the shade Tea House, I should say. Cool tone neutrals. It just has the one shimmer though. That, that's the only shimmer we get, but it looks really nicely neutral. Then another Roman palette. I told you last time when I reviewed my uh, first batch that I had another Roman palette to try out. This is the Peony Nude Garden, and this looks stunning as well. It actually has, ooh, if I can open it, it's a challenge with these sometimes. Oh, there we go. It's got like cooler tone neutrals down the bottom, and then all of these lovely pinks. We get one, two actual shimmers. This is a matte with sparkle, which I don't love. Um, but this looks absolutely stunning. Wake Make is another brand I wanted to try. This comes with like a face powder. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that, but I'm just gonna use it as eyeshadow. I do really like that gradient it has. That's stunning. Again, with the flaky glitters in here, a nice shimmer and some really lovely cooler tone neutrals. I can't wait to play with this. When I swatched this, I was super impressed. And finally, the Etude House Autumn Closet Play Color Eyeshadow Palette. 
They had two of these, and this was the more neutrally cool tone one. Maybe I should hold it like this. I mean, if you know anything about me, these are the kind of colors I like. Again, just three shimmers. That seems to be a theme with um, Katie Beauty brands. This is a bit more warm tone, but everything else is quite like this. This has my name written all over it. This quad right here. So, gonna do some looks with all of these to make sure I can try all the shades and I will be reviewing this and also the eyeshadow palettes I'm going back to in two different videos before the month, of, month is over. Um, I'm going to be doing K-Beauty Week this month. I'm going to be doing a, another um, Lisa Eldridge review as well. So I've got a lot of other videos in store. So I hope you're here for that and you'd like to stay tuned for all of that goodness. For now, thumbs up this video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more by me. I come on here four times a week and I have a second channel where I post once a week. So I hope you like to stay tuned and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.